I think it's official. I'm a real adult now. I have finally upgraded to a king size bed and it feels amazing. But if you're like me and you got the approval to order the bigger mattress, so you hurried up and did it, and then it arrived, and you realize you haven't thought about what you're gonna put it on, this is the perfect video for you because that is exactly what I did. So while my mattress sat in the corner for a few days, I had to come up with a quick solution to get my new mattress out and enjoy it. And so I built this super simple platform bed frame. And this thing goes together really fast. You can do it in an afternoon and it goes together super easy with the Craig pocket hole jig. And for this one, I use the Craig 520, which is a great jig for small spaces if you're working out of your garage or if you just need something mobile because you're trying to put pocket holes in really long boards. Let me show you how I did it. Building a bed frame is a lot easier than you might think. Even though it's a very large project, it's broken down into just three basic parts. You've got the headboard footboard pieces, which are the exact same. You've got two side rails, which are the exact same. And then you've got a center rail if you're building a large bed like a king or a queen. And that's just gonna prevent sagging. And all of those pieces are assembled separately. And then you can assemble them in the room if you use some bed rail brackets. And I'll link to these ones that I purchased on Amazon below. Now these are the first time I've purchased these. Um, so I haven't used them before, but they seem pretty simple and have decent reviews. So we're gonna give them a shot on this bed frame. Now you can assemble your entire bed frame without using these brackets and you can use pocket holes on the side. The problem with that is you're gonna assemble the whole thing and then move it into the room. Again, if it's a smaller bed frame, this could totally be possible. For a larger bed frame, if you ever need to break it down for moving or storage, it's gonna be better to um, do the parts individually like I'm going to do on mine. The first step to building this bed frame is to start by prepping the feet. Now the feet are going to be built out of two by six boards and you can build them out of any kind of lumber that you choose. Because I just spent a lot of money on my new king size mattress, I'm going to be using construction lumber. And the construction lumber um, has a curve on all four corners. I don't mind it on most corners, but the one that is going to be butting up against the rails, I don't want to have a gap there. So I'm going to first cut off a quarter of an inch on my table saw, just rip that edge so I have a nice flat surface to start. Then I'm going to add an angle to all of the legs and this will just give them a really elevated look as opposed to just a nice straight leg. And this is one of the most challenging parts, even though it's not very hard, of the entire build. To cut an angle in the boards, there are lots of different ways you can do it. Uh, well, the easiest would be to use a circular saw, use a guide track or a straight piece to make sure that your cuts are nice and straight. I cut mine on the table saw using a jig. Now this is a jig that I made a long time ago. I um, update it as I need, but the nice thing about using a jig on the table saw is you set it up once and then you can quickly rip through and cut all four of your legs. And now I have four identical big chunky legs for my bed frame. Now I've put them together in pairs and made sure that they're mirrored and I'm going to use the ones that are maybe not as pretty for the headboard since those will be up against the wall and I'm gonna use the prettiest two legs for the footboard because they're gonna be the most visible. So the next step is cutting the boards that go between the legs to finalize this headboard and footboard of the bed frame. And I'm going to be using two by sixes to do this. Now, because I cut the feet and ripped those down a quarter of an inch smaller on my table saw, I do need to make sure that I cut the measurement one half inch bigger to accommodate for that. With the two pieces cut, now I am ready to assemble and add the legs and that will be the finishing of the headboard footboard pieces. So I'm just checking, um, I've got a few marks on some of these boards. So I'm going to decide which one I want on the top because that's most important when it comes to this bed frame, the top and one side. And then I'm going to attach to the back the pocket holes. And I'm using the Craig 520 Pro to put pocket holes on my boards. And I love this one because it's mobile and I can move it around my shop wherever I need it. And when I'm working on very long boards, like for a bed, I can just clamp it right here 
on my desk, I mean my tabletop, and I don't have to move the boards into the bench top option. But before I drill pocket holes, I need to adjust the settings on both the jig okay, and the drill bit to make sure it's set up for one and a half inch thick material. To finish up the header and footer boards, I'm going to attach my legs to either side of the boards with those pocket holes that are drilled. I'm going to make sure to use a lot of wood glue and two and a half inch pocket hole screws because I have one and a half inch stock. I'm also going to use a face clamp. The face clamp makes sure that I am holding the boards nice and snug so that the front of the header, or sorry, the head board and footboard boards is completely flush. Next up, we are building some rails. Now the rails are consisting of a two by six with a two by four on top. And the two by four is there to brace the slats on the side of the bed or plywood if you choose to use plywood um, underneath your mattress. And before we attach this though, I just wanna note, if you choose not to use um, hardware for bed rails, you are going to want to alter this a little bit. You're either going to want to attach your side rails to your headboard footboard first because this two by four will hide all of your pocket holes. Or you can use a two by two board and then try to fit your pocket holes around that. Um, I am using the bed rails so I can disassemble it so I don't have to worry about that. And this two by four is set back a little bit from the edge so I have room for the um, bed rail brackets after it's all assembled. To attach the two by four board to my two by six rail, make sure to use plenty of wood glue. And then to hold it in place, I'm going to nail it down with some finish nails. And that's just to hold it in place so I can come back through and attach it permanently using the Craig Quick Flip. And this is a handy little tool that allows you to pre-drill holes to then flip it around and secure in Craig pocket hole screws and that is going to hold this all together nice and tight. My rails and my headboard footboard are done and they are ready for sanding and staining and sealing or paint however you choose to do it. Next up I have one more piece that does need to be built before we can take these finished boards into the bedroom and assemble the completed bed frame and that is the center rail, I, center support, whatever you want to call it, that is going to run parallel to the rails between the headboard and the footboard. And I actually bought a second set of these bed rails and I'm going to use it to attach the center rail as well between the bed, sorry, the headboard and the footboard. So that way I can also pull this out when I don't need it. And this is just built by a two by four and it's got a couple leg pieces on the bottom that are going to hold that center support um, up at the same height as all the rest of the pieces. All of the pieces are stained and sealed, and so it's time to put on the hardware. And I'm gonna do that in my shop before taking it into the room to assemble. Now the hardware consists of two pieces, and there's the plate that is going to go on the headboard footboard parts, and then these little pieces that go on the rails. And so when you go to assemble it, all you do is drop that over the headboard footboard and then you use this screw to just tighten it up so it's nice and snug and your rails are sitting right um, on top of the headboard footboard which is putting the weight through the legs. But I've noticed a couple flaws with the hardware that I got. So um, if you lay the hardware flat and try to uh, tighten these screws, they will only tighten down so far because the screw will actually go further than the space that is allowed by the bracket. And if you want this to be nice and snug, you actually are going to need to have it a little bit tighter than what the bracket is allowing. So there's two easy ways to fix this. The first one is you could put a washer there and that way when you go to tighten it down, um, you hopefully should be able to get it tight enough. The other way, which is what I'm going to do, is I'm going to, um, 
assemble the, or sorry, I'm going to mark where I'm going to attach the bracket on my board. Mark where these screws go in, and then I'm just going to drill out with a Forstner bit, um, maybe a, an eighth of an inch to a quarter inch shallow hole right where that screw goes, so I'll be able to tighten it fully. Now these brackets do not come with any instructions, so I'm kind of figuring out as I go along. And I've learned that having um, this Craig uh, Multimark tool has become a lifesaver because you're gonna need to be transferring a lot of marks. Also, you want a pencil that is nice and sharp. So the first thing I did is mark down three quarters of an inch because that is the distance from the top of the um, bed frame that I'm going to be putting all of the brackets. So I marked them all down three quarters of an inch. Now for this bracket, before I mark um, where I'm assembling everything, I'm going to measure the thickness of my actual rails. And that's where this multi-mark tool is super helpful. I can just put it on, flush up the bottom of the rail or the side of it with the bottom of this, and now I have the exact measurement, which is just shy of one and a half inches, which is why it's nice to use the exact measurement. And that is gonna make the rail exactly flush with the side of my headboard footboard. And I can transfer that mark right to the side. Then I can line this up so that the top is flush with my top line and the side is flush with my side line. And now I'm going to mark out the holes. For the holes that we'll be using just the regular screws to attach the bracket, I'm just gonna pre-drill those. Then I'll swap this out, and now I can pre-drill, or sorry, drill just some holes so those screws have a little bit more space. And you don't need very much. It's just maybe about an eighth of an inch more. And to attach these, the brackets actually came with screws, but they're really short. There's a three quarter inch and a one inch screw. Since I'm working with one and a half inch thick stock, I got some one and a quarter inch screws. The little bit longer screw is really gonna bite into the wood and hold the bracket nice and snug. Now I can reattach my screws. And you can see that it really does twist all the way down now. And then I'll loosen them up a little bit so I can attach this and then I'll be able to tighten them up really nicely. Now to attach the bracket to the rail, make sure you're mirroring them. So obviously this one will, well, will work on this side. Make sure I'm doing it on the top. Um, because that way the screws go into it when I drop it on and then the other one will go on the other side. And it's still the same three quarter inch down, but now I'm going to use my multi mark tool to measure the exact thickness of this bracket. And I'm going to set this in from the edge of the board that thickness and that will just make sure everything is properly positioned and again i'm going to mark pre-drill my holes and then attach all the brackets the bed frame was really easy to put together i was even able to assemble the entire thing by myself i really loved how the brackets went together and it's going to be super easy to disassemble the bed when we have to move it the next step is to add the base for your mattress to sit on. And you can either do a plywood base or you can do a slats base. And depending on which one you choose will depend on what you prefer as well as what your mattress is supposed to be on. Now my mattress says I can put it on slats as long as they're no more than two inches apart. And so I chose slats because they're a lot cheaper than doing the plywood because the plywood is still quite expensive right now. So I bought these one by four furring strips and I've cut them to the length. I did about an eighth of an inch smaller than the opening here for my bed frame. I've pre-drilled one hole with the Craig quick flip on each end and in the middle. And I'm just going to attach them with that two inch gap all the way up so I have a nice sturdy base for my mattress to sit on. 
And just like that, my new bed is now out of the boxes and on its bed frame. And I cannot wait to enjoy my first night sleeping in my new king bed. Now, if you don't have a king bed, you can still build this. I'm going to include the measurements for a twin, a full, a queen, as well as the queen on housefullofhandmade.com. So head over there to check that out and search around because I have many more projects like this for you to find.